Tiffany said we're twinning today. I didn't know that. We're twinning. I didn't realize he was going to wear gray. He didn't know I was wearing gray. Anyway. It's a great day. It's This is the best we've got. We live in a dark Victorian house, and there's no sun out. We're right on the top of a blizzard. It's like 20 degrees where we usually record. It's just too cold out there, so. But we're going to miss the blizzard. Yeah, we are. <clears throat> so today's uh, breakfast uh, soapbox rant is going to be on a... Somebody asked a question. If you look at our videos, we built a Model T, and uh, that all came about, and then on the side it says uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, a, a theme on it. It says, uh, I don't remember what it says now. It says Jehovah is God and Jesus is King, therefore advertise, advertise, advertise. It was kind of a play on that um, Cedar Point, Ohio convention, and... Yeah. So we, we did this because we, I'm a, I'm a gearhead. I was, you know, I always made the joke that before I became a witness, my God was cars. I would go drag racing on the weekends and I'd build cars. That's what I did for work in my backyard. And, uh, you know, anything car shows on the other, on the other weekends. So everything had to do with cars. So the only way you were going to find me at home, if I was, wasn't self-employed, witnesses would have never found me in the door door work. Um, and I am thankful for that, by the way, and I can tell you a reason why, but uh, a couple reasons why. But the reality is, is that uh, I was always gone on the weekend, so I always wanted to witness at car shows, and uh, so I always wanted to build, giving him a, a Mysterio guy too, a big bass head. Um, anyway, uh, we wanted to build a, a sound car. So I happened to, in North Dakota, we had, after we moved here, doing car stuff, we had to end up, ended up with a 36 Ford panel. I thought, man, wouldn't that be awesome to build We're a sound gonna car? That. We're going to do that. We just kind of always had that in our... And uh, witnessing, and it kind of got put off on the back burner because I wanted to build something like that back in Idaho too. But when I mentioned it to an elder, he said, uh, well, you know, we, we have to get permission from the venue, from the people that are there. And, you know, it made it, made it into this big deal. And I'm like you don't even understand how it works. You pay your 20 bucks for the car show and it's like your booth. You can do whatever you want in there. It doesn't matter. But it was talked down about, made it so overly red taped that it was just like, geez, I just wanted to set a car up and, you know, advertise a little bit about Jehovah and his kingdom. And history in particular too. Yeah. So uh, anyway, this came about, we had this, uh, we thought, how he's had that in the back of mind to do this uh, years later, now that we're in, moved to unassigned territory, and to build this sound car. Well, it came, started during that time period, they started ramping up for this, uh, the big convention mm -hmm. thing, and also digging into the history a little bit. So in the Watchtower, you'd see these little history articles about, uh, you know, coal porters and how they'd run the uh, rails, or, um, you know, driving an old Model A to different places and, you know, trading chickens for, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. literature or whatever it was. And we thought, well, what if we did something, you know, throwback even farther than that? And uh, the 100 year anniversary, 2014 was coming up. Yep. And we thought, you know, well, well 1914, Russell advertised with mm -hmm. Model Ts, you know, that'd be kind of a cool throwback. If we built something like that to advertise at car shows and, and uh, fairs and things of that nature, uh, and built it to where it was functional, but also kind of like what they would do back then if they were going to be witnessing. So it was kind of a study project in that way. And, uh, uh, and also a, a useful tool in the ministry. Mm -hmm. So we started this project. And anyway, the person asked, what uh, was the uh, attitude you had? I, she said, I, I think a the comment. person said, Somebody, the comment yeah. had said, uh, you know, hopefully you, do, you worked hard on it, it looked great. Hopefully you got some, you know. Appreciation. Yeah. And uh, so anyways, we built this Model T for that purpose. And we wanted to have it done by the uh, special assembly that we were having in Milwaukee. 35,000 people were going to be there. So it was kind of a big deal as far as that goes. Not a glory thing, but something that was uh, uh, fun to do and, and kind of get people a little amped up about it and happy to be Jehovah's people. And uh, We had a Model T sitting in our shop for a couple of years probably, and we were going to use it for something else. And then we, were let, we went to the spring assembly, which was in May. And then we had this convention, big convention coming up. So it's like, well, it's now or never. We better just get this. Yeah, built. let's do it. Let's, let's just build do it. This. You know. So uh, we didn't tell anybody about it. So we had six weeks to build this for the convention by the time we started, and so we worked on it nonstop. Um, and we were pioneering at the time too. So mm -hmm. between that work 
And uh, uh, we work for ourselves. Like I said, we build cars and we sell parts on eBay, car parts and uh, old car parts. And uh, we run a bed and breakfast. So between all that th things, we were building this Model T. So we get done with it and we take it down there. And, you know, we get to answer the question straight out. The, an the answer is, you know, there's a scripture that says there should not be divisions among you. <laughs> and the reality is, is that this really starkly brought out the divisions between the laity and the hierarchy. Yeah. Um, so d just to bring that out, we're, we go there and we're getting thumbs up from all sorts of people, wiving at us and driving by, you know, and whatever else, because it, it's kind of cool to see that as you're going down the road on our way to convention. And when we're there, there's a lot of people there that really appreciated it. A lot of brothers and sisters. Um, any particular stories that you remember? You mean specifically yep. about a person? Yep. So I, I'm just um, trying to relate some of the things that were good stories about it. I, I can't, you know, there was so many people. I just remember showing up. We parked on, I don't remember which section of the parking lot. You can see in some of our other videos, some of our videos of the build. There, I think the last one shows the convention. Um, but I don't really remember. I remember that older couple. The that old lady. stands out to me the most. The old lady? Everybody, yeah. Okay. She was so excited to see it. She was like, is this an original car? I want to get in it. And, and she was like... <laughs> 90 years old yeah. and that she's there with her son and it his says wife she was there when russell was right exactly there. so she's like uh i want to uh, and she's looking at it and we kind of stayed back you know we didn't want to get involved and just let people take do do what they're yeah, going to do and look pictures, at it take pictures or whatever. whatever just kind of a fun thing to yeah. lift the spirits anyway uh so we kind of laid low it wasn't about us and uh anyway somebody came up we were sitting in the grass uh, nearby and they said is this is this our standing i don't remember it might have been rainy so it might have been standing we were just standing by the you know back in the crowd kind of thing anyway and somebody says oh, oh did, so did you is this yours and like yeah and, and i said we built that and he says uh uh was, we started talking or whatever and she the old lady was up there and, and and i said well if you want go ahead and climb in and he's like uh oh no mom you shouldn't do that and she's like i'm, I'm getting, getting in it <laughs> it was so cute and so you know we let kids get in it and they could honk, honk the ooga horn. horn or whatever else so in that regard it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. um and I, I think on the second day, there was a brother from Bethel that was going around taking pictures, and I think the first day they wanted us to be interviewed. I don't know, interviewed, not interviewed. Yeah, they wanted to interview us and what we were doing, but the brother was taking pictures and was going to send them back to Bethel. Oh, he just for like to interview, see what we were, what it was well, about. What it was all about. Like, why not for like this? the convention no, or no, nothing, no, no. just for, you know, to tell the, the, the branch what was going yeah. on. Yeah. And some of the and some of the other people were like you could tell they were kind of turning up their nose at that you type of a thing and it's like ah, it's suits. okay it's not it's not suits the, were turning up their nose right. more, more to say yeah. yeah and it's uh and it's uh and not all of them you know there was one elder who he wanted to you know he wanted me to restore his Mustang and he was trying to track me down so that way I could restore his Mustang and I go no 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 that's this is not about that you know we're not trying to make money off of this this is this was just something for fun um, he was already looking to do the restore the Mustang thing but I wasn't gonna I wanted a clear dividing line between this and what I do for business you this know? is an advertisement for right us. exactly and uh, so we wanted to make that clear and we never did restore his Mustang I didn't return his calls or anything like that as far as that goes and by, we've restored cars we've restored a Model A for another brother so it's not like we wouldn't have done it but not under the pretense of you know this this vehicle and i don't think that maybe was his intent either i just didn't want to confuse the lines so anyway um there was that kind of that division starting to show because it's already there so anyway we get back to uh, but it wasn't again it wasn't with every all the hierarchy just you could see the tendencies there so we get back in in town and later we're doing our uh, our parking lot in our uh, can, our Kingdom Hall was redoing their parking lot. And one of the brothers there uh, remembered that we had the car, and he's like, oh, man, you need to bring that down. And I'm like, no, no, we don't we don't want to ruffle any feathers with that, you know. And he's, and he's like, oh, no, really? I mean, who could be upset at that? Bring it down, bring it down. I'm like, all right, fine. So uh, we re-bring it down there. And sure enough, you know, even though he said, oh, who could be upset about that? Uh, one of their elders in our hall, he's pretty pretty stuffy as far as that went and uh so we're coming home from the lunch where we had the luncheon for the uh for the group that was doing the hall uh, parking lot 
and he makes some snide comment. Me and Tiffany were riding back to the hall with him, and he made some snide comment about Absalom and his chariot, <laughs> and I just kind of ignored it, like, oh, brothers. And uh, anyway, but the brother who really liked it, who talked us into bringing it down, and who said, uh, you know, who could not like that, well, he happened to be the head guy at the convention. He was, a, he was a convention coordinator for that year. Yeah. So um, it was like that brother that was an elder, he kind of changed his tune after that. And that's all well and good. You know, we all have opinions and maybe it needs adjustment. But uh, so that kind of, again, that started to, to, to show, you know, what a lot of people um, – in the hierarchy think we had one sister come to us and we were set up at a uh, uh, so we'd go different places to set this up I, open it up yeah and go ahead, go ahead. what do you want to say no I was gonna say one of the things that was said and we were in Milwaukee was maybe what you're thinking of is that sister said your elders let you do this <laughs> yeah. that's one of the things that was said to me and I'm like let me well, yeah, let, let us me do this. What, what do you, do you mean, mean let us <laughs> Uh, they like didn't even the, know about it. <laughs> am, am I not a qualified for a ministry? Does everything need to go through some checks and boxes? I don't, you know, that's not the way I understood this to be. And that's not never the way I've taken uh, uh, the truth. Yeah, and uh, especially like around that time period is when the website really, I don't know, exploded. They put it on the Kingdom Halls and, you know, people were making pins and they were making all kinds of things with, say, JW.org on it. Did they need permission from the society to do that? Yeah, if you're a jewelry maker difference? and you decide to make pins that say JW.org, are you gonna? Did your elders let you do that? Yeah. You know, it, it's free advertising. You think yeah. you like that? You know, it really. And, and just because I happen to, instead of building jewelry, happen to build cars, and mm -hmm. it can be a little bit bigger thing, and I do it with you take yours to a jewelry store and, or, or jewelry show, and you wear your pin or, or wherever everywhere. else. Or, you wear yep. it out in service, and you wear it absolutely everywhere. Why shouldn't I be able to take? Uh, the gifts that I have and put them towards giving a witness about Jehovah to in the circles that I run in, which would have been the car show circuit. And again, you're not going to find these people at home during the uh, uh, weekend because they're at car shows, they're drag racing, mm -hmm. they're doing whatever. And during the week, you're not going to catch them home because they're working. So the next thing we decided to do is uh, uh, there was, uh, we had, we're going to go back to where we were from in North Idaho and, uh, uh, Your brother was visit, getting married. Yeah, and visit some family, and so we're like, well, what can we do over there to, you know, with some fun with it? Because we always like to witness places where we go. We we've, we've done that every, whether it be Eastern Washington, whether it be down in a, uh, where else have we? Western Washington. I don't know. Everywhere we go, we just uh, we, kind of yeah. Wore, we went to we kind of wear Friday. What's that? Friday Harbor, and we did witnessing there because it's interesting. You get to talk to different people who have different viewpoints, and and uh, it keeps it fresh and it's fun. I think we have always enjoyed the ministry. We're kind of weird that way, I guess. But uh, so we're like, how can we, you know, do something different? I'm like, well, what about the fair? You know, I was thinking about different car shows. Nothing was really going on that weekend. I'm like, wait a minute, what about the fair? So we call over there, and I call the fairgrounds, and because I, I don't want to step on any toes, and I said, uh, and as the scripture says, you know, preach in your assigned territories or however that scripture goes, and uh, so we called over there to the fairgrounds and said, "Was any other witnesses, you know, registered there?" And they said, "No, we don't have anything about Jehovah's Witnesses as far as getting a booth." And I'm like, "Well, that's required. I think that says that right in the guidelines as far as uh, setting up the carts somewhere. If you're going to do it on a, somebody else's." Uh, uh, event, you need to have uh, go through all the maybe be registered with them and you could pay a small fee as long as it's not too much and whatever else, which no specifics there, but you're supposed to be registered with them, and there wasn't so I didn't think anything of it and uh, so I thought, well, I'll call the congregation there uh, that's uh, in that territory, or at least that I think is in that territory, so I, I called that uh, congregation and uh, the brother didn't know. He said, I, I don't know of anybody that's doing any preaching there, but you know what, I'll have so-and-so call you back. And uh, so that brother calls me back. Uh, I missed his call for whatever reason. I think we were out in service. And uh, so I called him back. We played a little phone tag, could never get connected again. And I'm like, well, I've got two no's. I've got an elder at the one hall who says uh, they, they don't have anything planned. And I've got uh, the event itself saying witnesses aren't registered with them. So, you know what, let's just do it. And I had a deadline to do this, so I call them up, 
registered with them. So we get the car loaded up along with uh, another car that we were going to take with us. We've got a, a longer trailer we can haul two or three cars on. So we haul those back with us. It was Tiffany's Mustang, so we could just drive around while we're there. And we, we haul that haul it over there and get registered. Nope, no witnesses are on there. All well and good. We get set up. Perfect location. I mean, they've got us set up in the, uh, like the hit and miss engines. Like with and, all the uh, antique things. All the old cars, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Tractor. Right next to us was a, a guy that was, uh, had a Mustang sitting there, a newer Mustang. His Yep, and his wife was running for sheriff, um, and so their Mustang, this tricked out Mustang, was tied up in their deal. The other side of us was a guy who had hit and miss motors and an engine that was a, a rotary engine, if you know what that is, that is for like an airplane, but it actually ran a compressor. So it's kind of a cool little thing like that. Anyway, these uh, as we're setting up, getting things set up and, and getting them done. And I should say that we snagged an idea from, uh, we did set up in some other locations before that, and we just had a smaller TV, probably a 23-inch. And uh, we took some advice from a couple of brothers who were setting up at a college, and they said, no, 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 ditch that. Ditch that and get a big screen. Get the biggest screen you can get and put that in there and and ditch anything that has anything to do with anything controversial. Put like Caleb Sophia videos. Um, you know, you can do a couple of educational videos or something like that, but you know, nothing controversial. I'm like, that's a great idea. We'll do that. So sure enough, we go down and we, uh, we bought a big screen to put in there and uh, it, it just rolled Caleb Sophia, uh, Jehovah's name videos, uh, anything that wasn't that drastically uh, controversial. controversial, but could start conversations with. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, her aunt and uncle that were witnesses, they uh, uh, authorized it through the brothers to uh, give us their carts to set up in front of there um, in another congregation. Um, and those carts had never been used before. The Pioneer Sisters came to us and said, uh, thank goodness somebody's doing it because they would We've never We've been trying us. for a year to get these things to go and nobody would do anything. And then you show up and you can use them now. So then they were able to use the carts. But, but no, I don't know if it was just not having time to assemble them or whatever. And I had to put them together. Not a big deal. You know, it took me an afternoon or something like that. It's not. I'm not. trying to find a picture of our setup from the fair. Yeah. So... Anyway, the brothers that were, apparently they brothers did have a something set up there. They weren't registered like they were supposed to be. Uh, instead, they were, uh, there was a brother that was renting uh, wheelchairs there, and they uh, took a section of his uh, booth. booth, which I didn't have a problem with, but I had no idea. And it turns out that the fairgrounds are literally on the dividing line between those two, two congregations. congregations. So... This other congregation was actually the one who was doing witnessing there. So anyway, we're paid. We're set up there uh, with our booth. And they're across the hall right where the entrance is. I mean, across the uh, uh, fairgrounds where the entrance is, where the booths are. And we're back where the hit and miss motors are and things of that nature. So it wasn't like it was a conflict. A different entrance, really. Yep, exactly. So we were more towards the northern entrance. They would have been more towards the uh, west. west entrance, yeah. So... Um, and those were the that's the only entrances to the other side is the the rides uh, and stuff like yep, that. Yeah, and the entrance for um I guess like horses and things Animals. like that. But it's not it's not a, it's not the general public entrance. It's a, a vendor entrance for, you know, the food vendors that are there and the ride vendors mm -hmm. and the uh, uh animal vendors or whatever else you wanna uh put in there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the the brothers come over these elders come over, and I wasn't there. They talked to Tiffany, so I guess you can kind of express what happened with that. Because I'd happen to go somewhere. I don't know where I was, just getting some other stuff or whatever from the car. Yeah, I just questioned me, like, what congregation are you from, and who are you? And they just kind of gave me the, I don't know, they just grilled me with questions. And then I, I said, well, we're from out of state. We're here on vacation. And we called. Well, is your husband an elder? And I'm like, no. Well, we need to talk to him, and it was just question like that after one after the other, and it's like, oh my God. So that I so then I show up, and this is going on, and I'm like, so uh, you know, what's what's going on here? And they're like, uh, well, you know, you need to you need to take this down. This hasn't been approved, and I'm like, um, the reality is, is that if I take this down, you guys may never come back, because in the paperwork, yeah, it says that you have to be there. Uh, you need to be there from Start open to, to close, basically. All four days of the fair, otherwise 
whatever. Four or five days, whatever. Otherwise, you're, we can pull you and say you're never allowed back in again because they don't want that. They don't want to have a booth that's there and then all of a sudden it's not there. They don't want to have these vacancies in their uh, uh, mm-hmm. They want the consistency. Booths. Yeah, they want consistency. They want it to be full the whole time. Otherwise, you know, they won't get their revenue or whatever it is from people that want to walk through on Sunday and, you know, they missed it on, you know, Friday or whatever. Exactly. So, anyway, they're telling us this and I'm like, this is crazy. So, um, the brother who was supposed to make the decision, what's funny, that he was in a, he was away. He was teaching Pioneer School. Right? I, you know what? Because it's kind of confusing here. The one brother was uh, teaching Pioneer School that was at the first congregation I tried to get a hold of, which is why I couldn't get back a hold of him. And I think he was the same one who could okay this or anyway. Um, maybe he was their circuit overseer or something. I don't know who it was. A, you know, substitute circuit overseer, because that's usually who does uh, Pioneer Schools. At any rate, he calls up and he's like, I don't see the big deal here, you know. Um, and then I call my elder. They he calls my elder back. They're at, like, we want to talk to your congregation elder, your secretary. And yeah. we're like, all right. all right. So here's his number. So they call him. And it happened to be the brother who said Absalom's chariot. But by now, he'd been influenced by that convention overseer. And he, was, uh, he wasn't so negative anymore. And he's like, geez, you know, they're just away on a vacation. And he can be a pretty balanced guy sometimes. He just doesn't have a whole lot of backbone to stand up to things sometimes. But in, in uh, anyways, he discussed some things with them and he and with that other guy that was running the pioneer school or whatever. And he's like, "Well, geez, they're on their vacation. We're trying to witness about Jehovah. What's the big problem?" And you know, again, the circumstance that if we pull our card, they won't be. Able they to. may not be allowed again. And we didn't know. We did everything we could to try and call and whatever else. It shouldn't be such a bunch of red tape and such a big deal to give glory to our Father in Heaven. What's the problem here? We can't work together. This is, this is, uh, how is this Jehovah's way? How is it His spirit of love that you're operating with? You're operating with Pharisaic checks and boxes, not in love. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, we get to stay, and they were pissed about it. That other congregation was just ticked about it. The other co- congregation that was sharing the booth uh, across the fairgrounds. Yeah, and uh, so... They came over and they're like all puffy about it, you know? Yeah, and uh, it's not like any interest that we dug up. We couldn't keep it. I mean, I we're, mean we're 1,200 miles away. What are we going to do? We're not in competition with you. There was one individual came by. We started a study with him, had, had some discussions, went straight over to them and said, uh, you know, here's, here's the... somebody interested. If you've got a slip for him to fill out and whatever else. And, of course, they, you know, wedged in there and started bombarding him with literature and just just having a discussion with him. Take this, take this, take this. And I'm like, whatever. It's their territory. They can do what they want. So, uh, anyway... And I left that, that study with them because we were not going to cultivate it. The guy next to us with the hit and miss engine and that rotary motor that uh, he had, uh, what did he say? He said, he came up to us, I think it was on the second day, and he said, I I want to know if that if that witness that was here last year is going to be here this year. And I'm like, I don't know, I wasn't here last year. I have no idea. You said you have to go up to the booth for that while. Yeah. And he said, he said, well, I just, I was really rude to one of you people last year, and I just want to apologize to her. You know, and we'd had four or five conversations with him, just about the car and just yeah. about whatever else. and Nothing religious, nothing yep, biblical, and, nothing. And, but that one-on-one pers- personality and uh, personal uh, interest and, and conversation broke down some walls. So now this guy wants to apologize to the sister that he treated rudely before, uh, right next to us. Uh, the guy, the sheriff and his wife. This guy knew more about witnesses than I do. He had, you know, like the Cole Porter's pins, the the uh, had the little, isn't that purple with a cross in the middle of I it? I think so, something like. I, that. I think Russell gave them out. Um, at the for the Bethel family. Yeah, how many were given out? Is that what is that? Was well, Bethel just family? at the Bethel family. Wasn't very many. I mean, anyway, this guy had two of those pins. Two or three of them, yeah. And so, anyway, his uh, we had a great conversations with him, too. And he asked me about Trinity, for example. And he says, uh, uh, he named off, uh, well, what do you think about, uh, you know, Trinity? And my nail in the coffin scripture is that has always been um, uh, the one in John where it says, uh, uh, I am ascending to my father and your father. My and, God and your God. Uh, and my God and your God. 
So uh, how does Jesus call him his God? And so I asked that question to him. And he's like, yeah, but what about this scripture and that scripture? Said, no, 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 no. You asked me first. So I tell you what, I've, I've got, we can have a conversation about those other scriptures. I don't have a problem with that. But you asked me. So you prove that one wrong first. You prove that scripture wrong first. And, and then we'll discuss those other ones. Turns out he was absolutely nice about it. He comes to me later and goes, maybe this isn't the time, place to debate it. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we, he was he was great. You know, he when we had to go to the bathroom or something, he washed the tea and he was out there with a feather duster wiping it we, off. We had to leave because we had a, like I said, Chad's brother was getting married that weekend. Yep. And so we had to leave. Of course, the wedding's in the afternoon at night. It was no big deal. We, It was before, I think, we set up. I don't remember. But we had to be gone for like, two hours for a family brunch at the resort and, and there he's was like i'll watch it for you just go <laughs> so because there had to be somebody manning a booth that's All part the of the regulations and it has to be there until from open to close and uh you know we had other witnesses that would come from other congregations uh, uh mainly the one that we were uh, got the, the carts, carts from. from they would come and sit down there but you know with, during that time slot there wasn't somebody available so uh, when we needed to be at the wedding Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess that, uh, and the, again, by and large, the, any of the brothers and sisters that came by, they loved it. Hierarchy, not so much. And again, I'm not saying all hierarchy, but there's this attitude that they run the show. And if it's anything outside the realms of the checks and boxes that they create, well, then it it totally... They just feel challenged. It takes away the fire of the spirit is what yeah. it does. It, so that uh, that's very sad that the fire of the spirit is put out by uh, checks and boxes and organizational procedure. It just shouldn't be that way. Yeah, it makes the ministry feel difficult. It makes it feel overwhelming when you feel like you have to jump through all these hoops and make sure everybody's a- approved. <laughs> you know, you're qualified. You've given you're given the knowledge. You're qualified to talk about it. Yeah. So I guess that's the the scoop on that. By and large, most people loved it. The the general public ate it up. Really I loves mean, it. it had a yeah. great conversation starter and whatever else. Even with people who just liked cars would come up and talk, and then we'd talk about uh, it, it. We'd turn the corner into witnessing. Another great experience we had. We took it to Rolog. Uh, Rolog is a uh, old steam threshers reunion. And it's a pretty big deal. You can look it up uh, uh, on uh, the internet. It's in Minnesota. And that brother that was uh, the convention overseer that we were talking about before, he said, "No, let's. I want to go to Rolog with you with it. You know, so let's do that." So we set it up, went to Rolog, and we had the idea we we're going to play videos and stuff in there. And they totally squashed it at the uh, at Rolog. They said no, literature. no advertising and no literature. And so I was like, "Oh, I'm kind of bummed out." He's like, "Man, just let the let the thing do what you designed it to do." Like, all right, so we uh, got a bunch of old pictures. I had a whole bunch of, because from doing the research, had a bunch of old pictures of, of witnesses and uh, old cars. So it would be uh, witnesses, uh, Rutherford with his Cadillac where it had the, the big speakers on it. It'd be a couple different sound cars. It'd be uh, 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 Ru- Russell in the, you know, advertising for the, photo the photodrama creation. Any of that kind of stuff that had historic value in it. A, a guy that control a coal porter that converted a Model A into uh, something he could sleep in while he did the witnessing on the road, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> he, we just ran those pictures on there, had some great conversations mm-hmm. with people. So um, it was a nice venue, and it was a fun day, and it was a refreshing break from the monotony of organizational checkboxes and procedure. Mm-hmm. So I guess I, j- j- hopefully that answers your question. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave us a nice comment, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post a video.